Okay, let's go back to our discussion. Okay. So, maintaining consistency. Uh, something to be aware of here is the need to uh, differentiate between versions and variants. <laughs> Wait lang. <laughs> Yung kapatid ka. Okay, dumb in distraction. <laughs> Sorry for that. Asa na nga ako. Let's continue. So, uh, we need to differentiate the uh, version and variants. No, ano ba ang pinagkaiba nun? So, when you say version, a new version replaces the previous version. So, in contrast, a variant is an alternative to what exists. Uh, it's a different flavor of something that's already familiar. So a variant might arise because of the need to provide for the same functionality, let's say in a different environment, or let's say in a different range of uh, functionality or in the same environment also. So uh, variant is not a replacement for versions okay tandaan niyo po yan variant is not a replacement for version so as you see on the diagram no it shows a time sequence from left to right okay and the best examples here is yung tinatawag na dll hell anyone knows what is a dll no so yung dll kasi is a parang sabi na instruction for the machine no to run to the program, to the uh, operating system, okay? So, an example daw here is yung DLL hell na tinatawag, okay? So, let's say for Windows, in the yung late 1990s, nagkaroon daw na tinatawag na DLL hell. So, because of the uh, legacy software installation, okay, uh, developers uh, designed their installed programs to concentrate on their own products, which often... Uh, impacted on uh, programs that were already installed on the PC. So uh, this will lead to uh, DLL hell, where the installation or let's say kahit an installation of a one application no, would cause other application to stop working. For, for example, I'll give you an example. Ah. For instance, no, let's say meron akong isang application. Tawagin natin itong application A. No? And yung application A na yon ay merong DLL version na 1.0. Okay, in-install ko na siya sa PC ko, sa machine ko. And then, there is another application, application B naman. So, sa application B with the same DLL, okay, kasi same sila ng, ano eh, ng, uh, ng application eh, no? iba lang tawag, okay. So, with the same DLL, uh, with the same DLL name, but different version. Okay, so let's uh, let's take that as uh, version two. Okay, you have a uh, ano magandang example to. Let's say Photoshop. No, fo you have Photoshop uh, twenty fifteen. Okay, bit mababa. Photoshop uh, ano ba mababang version two thousand six. 
may oh nga mayroong version 2006 ano so let's or 2003 yan uh, photoshop 2003 okay yung first version mo another version mo is photoshop uh, 2015 okay so ibang version na la yun ano so when the application B or yung Photoshop 2015 is installed on the same system which has the Photoshop 2003 no na naka-install then it overwrites the DLL file to the uh, version ng Photoshop 2015 and if the to, uh, the Photoshop 2015 is uninstalled okay pag in-uninstall mo ah yung 2015, yung DLL also gets uninstalled. Okay? And uh, it will fail to launch the application A as well or the uh, the Photoshop 2003. Ano, hindi na rin siya gagana. No? And now, uh, pero yung uh, mga bagong releases ng versions naman, ano, ay gumagana na okay lang okay so more recent releases of windows have had to allow for side by side versioning na tinatawag okay so which is another term for what we're calling variants no pag side by side versioning variants na po ang tawag dun. so ibig sabihin kahit anong versions pa yan ano gagana pa rin siya okay that's it 2003 no alam ko photoshop ganun eh 2015, install mo as nag-install ka ulit ng lower version. Alam ko gumagana pa rin eh. Ano? Let's say, kunyari, Visual Studio. Ah, hindi pala. Uh, NetBeans. Yan. Let's say, NetBeans. Nag-install ako ng NetBeans 2008. Ano? And then, nag-install din ako ng Apache NetBeans. Okay? Uh, iba na yun. Ibang version kasi yun eh. No, may Apache na. So, Gumana, gumagana sila parehas. Okay. So, tawag po ng variants na po. <clears throat> so, magkaiba ang variants sa version. Okay. Managing multiple models. So, in most cases, uh, you will have to cope with multiple models that need to coexist. For uh, several reasons, you will end up with more than one model and it will have to be a configuration item in its own right. So if we will be having system integrations, no, for sure we have uh, one or more, more models for sure. Ano? And models may be uh, limited in extent for reasons of uh, practicality or to meet the aims of a particular project. So minsan nalilimit lamang extension ng models eh. if meron lang uh, particular project na or system na ini involved so the most common boundaries are defined by the extents of organizational units or let's say geographical locations or both now let's say malayo yung lugar no and magkakahiwalay yung mga uh, let's say yung mga departments diba so how are you going to install one one system sa multiple departments na eh, magkakalayo diba so kailangan mo install sila in different departments, di ba? So, you have multiple models. Okay? So, models may be produced to cover uh, different viewpoints on the same area. Okay? And models may relate to different points in time. So, let's have an, a specific example for this. As you can see, the figure, you know, it shows two ways of coping with the need for both the analysis team and then design team. Okay, uh, sequential and parallel approach. Um, nakikita nyo, and this approach may also be in be seen in assembly. Okay, first approach is the sequential approach. Only one group. Only one group, okay, let's say, sabi natin, the, the analyst or the designers is permitted to edit the model at one time. So, let's say, in maintenance, no? Uh, let's say, mag-upload sila, mag, 
dadownload sila ng, ba ng bagong variants or versions, di ba? So, kailangan daw one group lamang ang permitted to edit the model at one time. So, this helps to prevent the analysis and design from getting out of step, but only at the price of slowing the work done. So, medyo matagal nga naman, di ba? So, designers have to wait for the analysts to finish their latest round of changes before they can get on. So, ihintayin pa ng designers no, yung analyst na matapos sila sa ginagawa nila bago sila mag-implement ng panibago. No? And vice versa. And there's also the danger that one group will change a feature introduced by the other group, no? which then gets reinstated by the first group and so on. So, mangyayari kung ma pwede mapaltan yung changes nung isang group, di ba? Kapag ang gamit natin ay sequential approach. But if you're going to this parallel approach is well, probably ito yung more realistic alternative no, na approach for models. So, both teams can progress their respective models at their own pace, but at the risk of introducing incompatibilities between the two viewpoints. Let's say, yung isang model ay uh, ini-implement nung sabihin natin ng analyst, and then another model was implemented by the designer. Okay? So, ang problema daw nito, possible din na magkaroon ng incompatibilities between the two viewpoints. So, to check for this, ano ang kailangan gawin nila? Okay? So, to adapt for the change, kailangan daw may review. No? So, yung review na yun, uh, they need to decide how to handle certain modifications proposed by the other team or the other team. Now, it will be necessary to uh, set up, let's say, joint meetings or review meetings or at different appropriate points, diba? So, this session or this approach is costly in time no? and simply energy and require careful management. Eh? So, the big danger is that uh, meron tayong tinatawag na us versus them mindset. Ano? Pwedeng ma-build up yung us versus them na mindset, which each group effectively ignoring the input of the other. So each ends up going its own way na lang, di ba? So uh, there's no perfect answer to managing multiple uh, systems or models. But if you at least recognize the potential problems, you can start to think about... Uh, well, on the possible solutions, di ba? Automating housekeeping. So, one solution for models is to automate key steps in the process. So, automation can not only make sure that the job is done in the approved manner, but also close off various routes so that the right way is the only way of doing things. So, kaya tayo nag automate no? Is to make the process easier okay and to make sure that the process is uh doing the right thing okay so one of an example is office applications no so office applications are automated na rin, no automation enabled na which means that they expose the internal structure of their constituent parts along with the mechanisms that permit external applica applications to access and to modify them. Ano, ibig sabihin nun, uh, sabi ko nga, di ba, ang meron tayong tinatawag na commercial off-the-shelf softwares, di ba? One of the example nun is ito, okay? Yung office applications. And yung office applications are like a third party in different system integrations wherein uh, the automation used in Microsoft Office is built in Visual Basic. No, pwede siyang ma-modify. Okay? The domination of uh, Microsoft Office, it helps the organization's business to be more efficient and flexible in any given time. No? Kung papansin niyo, meron siyang pang emailing, mail, mail merge, meron siyang uh, word for word processing, no, meron siyang uh, spreadsheet, okay? Meron din siyang database, no, access, design, meron din, di ba? Ang galing. 
So, yun. Uh, many of the products you will want to use for managing analysis, design, and other development stages sa SDLC natin now have this sort of capability built in na. Okay? Diba? SDLC, System Development Lifecycle. So, checking on the availability of the automation feature should certainly be on your vendor selection checklist. Okay? So, it's either on the first adaptation ng research and development, no, data gathering, meron na pong implementation ng automation, automated systems, okay? Hanggang sa implementation ng, hanggang sa maintaining the system, di ba? Meron pa rin tayong automation ng ating different systems. So, checking on the avail availability of the automation feature should certainly be on your vendor selection checklist. So, dito naman, uh, it depends, let's say, ako yung may-ari ng company, di ba? It depends doon sa software vendor na pipiliin ko. So, sila nang bahala, no? For sure, uh, meron na silang automation no? for the processes na pwede nilang gawin throughout the application ng kanilang system, no? So, if you're going to apply software vendors in your company, the automation applies first. Okay, so Microsoft provides a dialect of Visual Basic or yung tinatawag na VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. Ito yung macro programming language for their product, no? but you're not limited to using that for automation. So in practice, most automation seems to be built uh, in using Visual Basic. So, a pseudocode algorithm for a typical piece of automation will look something like this. No? Nakikita nyo sa figure. Okay? Also, to help the automation in connecting different applications, kailangan ng tool adapters. Diba? So, one of the uh, lesson na provided ninyo sa system integration is yung tinatawag na tool adapters na kung sino man pa mag-discuss nun. So, yun. <clears throat> so, deliberation of information and application services out of back-end systems is the job of the tool adapters or, or adapters. So, when you say adapters, it uh, sit between the source application or target applications and the system integration no, in the back-end systems by translating no yun by the word translating the business rule and model request into something the native source application or target application can understand you know, so that they translate the response okay so that is the tool adapters okay last one is deploying rules tapin na tayo so in the pro deploying rules no uh kailangan daw meron tayong tinatawag na testing new system so why do we need testing uh first a lot of times the business rules and models are skipped okay minsan din na natin napapansin or nagagamit so the product and business might suffer for that so now to understand the importance of testing, let's have a look at some key points that explain why business rules and models needs to undergo it. First is the uh, unit testing. So the lowest of these levels is where the uh, realizations of the rules meet up with other bits of the machinery in a state to do some real work. Okay, So it's up to you to define what you mean by a unit, okay? So unit test, test individual component. Okay, in Windows, for example, it might be is the COM component that tinatawag na naka-encapsulate sa DLL natin. So this requires a test a harness, okay? Sa ating ano daw, unit test at integration test, kailangan may tinatawag na test harness, no? Uh, to cover for the other parts of the system that, aren't there yet, okay? And a supply of suitable test data, meaning you need to automate the testing process. Hindi pwedeng manual yan, okay? Kasi lalo na pag nagkaroon ng error, ano, manual yung ginawa mo sa testing mo. Hirap yun. 
So support for debugging, increase the productivity of the system through automation, enhance the quality of so software components and application. No, yung mga yan, no, is for testing hardness. So to record the test results for each one of the test, no, uh, kasi medyo complex kasi yung condition yun eh, when testing hardness, no, uh, it is difficult to simulate. No, test hardness is used for automation testing and system integration testing. So, test hardness. The next step up is integration testing. So here, you're pro progressively adding together the already tested units to make larger and larger systems or models of the final system. So in the context of a particular system, it should be obvious which units to go together to make meaningful systems. So as the functionality includes included gets more complete, it should be uh, possible to use test data with a clear or let's say sabi natin closer uh, resemblance to the kind of thing that will be encountered in the practice. Okay. And in the final level, no, yung acceptance testing. So ibig sabihin dito, uh, usually it is an essential step in the systems being accepted as fit for the business owner's purpose, no? So by this stage, uh, all the units will have been integrated to form a fully working system na, okay? Now, the test data can look exactly like the real thing, no? Sabi natin sa pilot implementation or beta test, parang yun na rin yung nangyayari, di ba? No? So kung okay na, okay na yung pilot implementation at beta test, no, final level na, which is acceptance testing, okay? So now the test data can look exactly like the real thing. Yun nga, sabi ko kanina. So it may also be the first opportunity to try out some of the non-functional aspects such as yung response time, gano ba katagal, diba? And at the level of acceptance testing, other parts of the business model can also be used to define what to look for. Uh, particularly, it should be possible to run through all the business narratives to show that they all behave as would be expected. So in different departments, no, in implement na lahat ng systems, no, yung linkages ng different systems no, is going smooth. No? Uh, especially in the way that they cope with uh, natural scenarios na. Okay, yun na yung mga business rules natin. So all the materials, let's say yung test specifications, yung test harness na tinatawag, test data, and test results should be treated as configura, uh, ano dito? configuration items no? in their own right. Okay? It should be uh, possible for you to identify exactly what tests have been carried out and to be able to repeat any of the tests if necessary no? in the future. So, doon na yun sa maintenance mangyayari. So, after that, no, dapat meron pa rin tayong tinatawag na contingency planning or rollout. Okay? Uh, you can do a few things to reduce the risk that always accompany for implementing new systems. If this is your first attempt at a system and then you are relying heavily on business rules only, you might consider introducing yung tinatawag na POC or proof of concept, no? Para sa inyong uh, project planning. No, kailangan may proof of concept ka. Contingency yan eh. So this should provide assurance, yun nga, that you can manage the uh, system and gives an early opportunity to check out uh, such features as the, abili as the ability to scale under load before investing too much effort. Bakit daw mahalaga yung rollout strategy? At bakit to kailangan? So we all know, sabi ko nga, diba, that change is normal, but change is hard okay, for different companies. 
And but it is necessary sabi natin, it is necessary to adapt, not to eat. And people are afraid to change. Most CEOs of the companies are afraid for that change. Kasi for sure, iisipin nila gaano kamahal yung, mga, yung gagaasasin ko, di ba? Let's say, kunyari, sa isang or university, di ba? Yung isang university uh, ay manual process lamang sa registrar, manual process lamang HR, manual process lamang attendance, manual process lamang ang uh, scheduling, manual process lamang ang uh, grading system, manual process lamang ang enrollment, di ba? Sobrang daming uh, sections or departments ng isang university. Okay? So, sabihin natin yung may-ari yung, yung university are afraid for to change you know, to a newly customized systems or let's say sabi, enterprise, ERP. Kasi multiple systems ang gagawin niya. Eh. So for the company to get value, you know, they need to make it more comfortable to provide you information training. So you need to be able to use the system and that's the rollout strategy. Strategy comes in. No? Before implementing, kailangan meron kang rollout strategy. Okay? Ano ba yung kailangan kong gawin? No, kapag i-implement yung system, kailangan ba may training ng mga employees, alam ng mga employees kung paano gamitin yung system. Okay? And gaano ba kalaki yung magagastos? Ano? Parang tinitingnan dito, parang nagkakaroon ng troubleshooting. Ano? By each department. Ganon. If the new system introduces changes to working practices, it's always worth considering a pilot implementation. So, kailangan may reruns tayo. So, this allows you to shake down the rollout procedures on a smaller stage na where problems are easier to resolve. Okay, diba? Meron din naman tayong tinatawag na MAC test. No? Before ka maging, let's say, kunyari, gusto mong mag-gusto mo maging police, di ba? may MAC test. Gusto mo maging accountant. Diba, may MAC test din. So, hindi ka pwedeng maging accountant kung hindi ka pumasa sa MAC test, di ba? So, ganun din dito. Pag hindi pumasa yung system sa pilot implementation, so, hindi mo pwedeng i-implement yun. So, it gives an opportunity to check the effectiveness of various support functions as well as the system itself. For example, you can see whether training courses have covered the right areas. Let's say a help desk is set up to give the right kind of response. So, having more immediate links from uh, from that different systems no or to their implementations allows people to work in a different way but uncertainties and errors are inevitable during the first implementation so a pilot implementation can help by increasing familiarity with the system and revealing any unexpected problems so one final point to bear in mind when we are planning system rollout, okay, is the need for fallback policies to deal with problems encountered. So, kailangan natin fallback policies, contingency planning, ano, uh, these policies are not intended to cover the same ground as any business continuity mechanisms, okay, that will be in place to support normal operations. So, if ever, if ever there is a problem, no contingency policies and fallback plan will take place to manage and utilize risk response. Okay, and the last one, live system. Last na po ito. Hey, hey last na. <laughs> Supporting live system. So let's say uh, you are going on live. The system will run on live no probably uh problem may occur for sure to manage problems when implementing live system even if you don't have a let's say sabi natin sophisticated system sobrang uh, complex na system management tool in place it's pretty straightforward to set alerts no for possible danger signs. Pinakamahalaga yan. And to examine log files, yan, for histories of system behavior. Ito, tatandaan nyo, ha? 
isa, bibigyan ko kayo ng key. No? If you're going to create systems para sa inyong mga uh, capstone project. Key lang ito. Ah. Huwag na huwag niyong tatanggalin yung log file. Ano? Napakalaganan na log files. Ano yung ibig sabihin kong log files? Let's say, kunyari, uh, kunyari, I'll give you an example, ah, log files. Yung system, si admin may babaguhin sa database. Yan. Sa one of the features dapat ng system nyo ay merong log files. Wherein, nakikita dapat natin na may binago sa system. Okay? Let's say, kahit sa Kahit anong part ng system, sa design, sa implementation, sa database, may na-delete, may in ganyan, no? So, may in-update sa system. Dapat lahat, lahat ta as in, lahat ng parts ng system ay nakalag in sa files ninyo. Okay? Uh, one best example is, kunyari, uh, yung sub-admin. Sub-admin to, ah. Diba? Let's say meron tayong... Master admin, may sub admin, mayroong uh, user, di ba? So let's say si sub admin ay uh, na ano gam na uh, dedak yan. Let's say nag dedak ng inventory, oh, yan. Ngayon kung wala kang log files, no, hindi ma detect system na nag siya ng inventory. So, it will be a cost-benefit. Ay, it will be a uh, tawag din eh. Lugi, magiging lugi yung ano, yung company. Kasi, dinadaya ka na pala, di ba? May dinededak ka sa system, sa inventory mo. Pero, uh, hindi naman nagiging profit sa uh, company. Okay. So, kailangan mayroong kang part, uh, kailangan mayroong kang part sa system mo na kailangan makita no, ng sub, ng master admin na nagdedak itong sub admin na to ng uh, inventory. Okay? Wherein, para madetect natin kung ano yung flaws okay, ng bawat system. So, tatandaan nyo po yan. Napakalaga po ng uh, log files. Ano? Tapos, executable na lang through uh, XML or through that text file ano, or pwedeng uh, reprint. No, pwede siyang iprint each day or by week. Basta kailangan meron kayo log files ano, para lahat ng actions ng individual uh, persons na gumagamit ng system ay monitored. Okay, tatandaan niyo yan. Isang features yan ng isang system na hindi dapat mawawala. No? Log files. Okay? So, I am expecting na kung gagawa kayo ng capstone project, kailangan may log files yan. Ano? Wag na wag yung tatanggalin yan. Okay? Dapat meron kayong log files. Kasi napakagandang features na. No? Kasi lalo lalo na kapag you're going to create a system for a big company. Ano? Tapos integrated system pa ng multiple systems. Let's say kunyari, yun nga, uh, enterprise yung system na gagawin mo. Napakahirap noon. Diba? May attendance monitoring. Let's say sa, sa university, yung what I've example kanina. May attendance monitoring, may HR, Ano, may accounting. Okay? So, napakahirap ng walang log files. No, kaya tatandaan niya po yan. One key features and one more important key, key feature ng isang system is the log files. Okay? Gagawa kayo ng log files. Madali, hindi, well, hindi naman siya ganun ka, kung ang system na gagawin nyo ay hindi mang ganun ka, complex. Ano? Hindi siya ganun kahirap gawin yung log files. Para lang kayo nagko-call out ng mga functions and methods. Ano? Tapos, i-output nyo lang naman eh. So, madali lang yun. So, if you have questions about that, pwede naman kayo mag-PM sa akin. So,
Miss Ever ah, na in near future nagka problema kayo so yon and uh ano pa ba so in supporting live systems you will also need to react to different incidents that may indicate undetected problems okay the syempre dito papasok na si ano si system analyst tsaka si uh, quality assurance tester di ba kayo meron kayong different uh, tawag dito uh, position right di ba meron kayong different position sa inyong uh, capson project sige tanungin natin si Mr. sino kaya si Mr. Plaza Earl. Yan, naglep si Mr. <laughs> naglep si Mr. Plaza. Ba't may mga naglelep? Sige, let's say sabihin natin si Sir, ano po sir? Nawala, nawawala po nung. Ayun na, pala sir. sige. Ayun. Nawawala na po. Uh, ah, okay, 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 sige. Si Mr. Plaza, tanungin kita. Let's say ikaw, ano yung position mo sa sa cap sa inyong thesis? Meron na ba? Sir, nag uh, si Kas pa lang kami. nag ano po, title, title pa lang. nag pa lang. Ayun. Oo, oh, diba? Nasa title na kayo. So, ibig sabihin Ako. that, each, ito ha, ewan ko kung meron, binigyan ba kayo ng position? Kunyari, ikaw si uh, project manager, yung isang mong ka-team ay, ilan ba kayo sa isang team? Dalawa lang kami, sir. Ha? Totoo? Opo. nag ano pa po sa mga bukod kung may mga kagroup kaming isa pa po. Pero, <laughs> Nag, marami, marami, meron na kaming mga title, sir. Dalawa lang, nakakagulat naman Opo. yun yung sis, para sa system. Ano. Sa bagay, kaiwan ha? Well, bahala kayo. <laughs> Dalawa lang pala. Opo, sir. Sin, sino dito ang ano? Pero naghahanap pa daw ng ibang members, gano'n? Daw po, merong pring isa pa. Ah, so ibig sabihin mga tatlo? Opo, sir. Ah, so anong position mo sa team? Siguro, sir, yung mga pag mag-program, depende po, parehas oh. na kami gagawa, sir. Ah, kasi, ito, ah, I'll give you different positions ng isang, sa isang capstone project, no, sa isang project. Uh, meron tayong tinatawag na project manager, wherein siya yung, syempre, parang siya yung pinaka-team head. You know, the head of the team or the team leader, wherein siya yung nagpa-process ng lahat. Kumbaga siya yung pinaka uh, focal Uh, person, ano, alam niya dapat pasikot-sikot ng system, etc. Ganyan. So, tawag sa kanya project manager. So, kapag kayo ay magde-defense, no, dapat may, may tawag sa inyo. Okay? Handaan niya yan, ha? Dapat may tawag sa inyo. So, let's say, kunyari, sasabihin mi, uh, I am Earl Gerald Plaza, the project manager of the team. O, ganyan, di ba? Maganda kaya yun, may alam niyo maganda kaya sa feeling na may distinction kayo no may position kayo para alam niyo kung ano yung gagawin niyo let's say merong programmer head programmer ganyan programmer and designer no hindi siya naman yung talaga nagpo-program di ba meron din tinatawag na QA tester quality assurance tester ibig sabihin nito from time to time no tinitingnan niya kung may error ba yung system or uh, siya yung naghahanap ng mga butas sa system. No? Ganun. And meron din, syempre, documenter. Okay? So, si documenter siya naman, syempre, overall documents. Okay? Mga paper, paperworks, ganyan. So, yun. Siguro, ang pinaka-main part dyan sa, ano, kung tatlo lang kayo, ang mangyayari dyan, siguro, si project manager, documenter, programmer, designer. Yan. Maalin dyan. Yun siguro yung mga main parts. No? But, yun. Kasi kami, no, share ko lang <laughs> bago tayo matapos. Kasi kami before, lima kami. Tapos nadagdagan pa ng isa, anim. You know, ang problema dito, uh, dahil yun na nga, anim kami, hindi lahat gumagawa. No? So, dahil marami kami, hindi lahat gumagawa. No? Hindi naman sabi na buhat ko yung sarili ko. No? Ako na yung programmer, ako na yung project manager, ako na yung designer, ako na rin sa nagdo-document, di ba? 
So, ang hirap sa team na ganun. Okay? So, ang, ang nangyayari sa kanila, may mga tawag sila sa isa't isa. Yung isa, tawag sa kanya, uh, driver, kasi <laughs> siyempre, uh, pag may pupuntahan kami, di ba? Ganyan, may, may driver kami. <laughs> yung isa naman, financer. Yan, tawag sa kanya, financer, kahit out of the blue. Wala siya, pero lagi siya nag-finance, ganyan. Yung isa, dishwasher. <laughs> Tagahugas lagi ng mga ano, pinagkaina. <laughs> Nakakatawa lang. So, tatandaan nyo, if you're going to have your team, make sure lahat ay nagpa-participate. No. So, mahirap sa isang team na one-man band. Okay? So, yun. And for the last, in conclusion, ano, so, Life cycle cost, given the dominance of non-development costs, it's obvious good sense to make sure that we do everything possible to minimize the cost. Okay? If you're going to integrate system, kailangan uh, gawin mo lahat para ma-minimize yung uh, pera. Okay? Managing evolution, one thing's for sure, change is normal. And the world will evolve and our information systems will have to evolve with it. Okay? And the last, deploying rules. In implementation, allows oh, always allow system testing before implementation so that rules are incorporated properly and use uh, contingency planning or rollouts to minimize risk. Okay? And that's all for the discussion today. Okay, any questions so far? Question ba? Any questions? Or may insights? Or may gusto kayong sabihin? Stop ko lang po yung recording. May gusto